Wajia the Naskuma Jusham Yak Bookshame and Jesus to Yak, meeting Jesus Mu Bayak, then get your guys bookshame, Jesus to make Jagonot. Don't worry, I'll translate what I said. <laughs> Actually, I, I am uh, uh, really honored to have been invited as uh, one of the speakers uh, to your conference. Uh, gives me an opportunity to, to share with you some of my thoughts and, and what is happening in, uh, in Quebec, or more importantly, uh, in our area, which we call Inuishti. And for those of you, uh, when I say Inuishti, I am not swearing. <laughs> so we are living, I believe we are living uh, with change and to a degree uncertainty. A new government has recently been elected in Quebec, and then some of its policies are still taking shape. The world economy is volatile, and in some regions, uh, struggling. Our neighbors in the United States will go to the polls in just a few days to vote for a president. Decrees of Inuishti uh, are not isolated from these events. We, like everyone in this room, are part of the global economy. We are affected by events, not just in our territory, but it, what happens in Quebec City, what happens in Ottawa, in Washington, in New York, London, Beijing. Decisions there cannot fail to have an impact on resource development in Canada and in northern Quebec. In this context, what is the Cree perspective on resource development and mining? In a way, we support sustainable mining that respects our rights, respects our environment, and provides real benefits to our people. My remarks today will be guided by the theme of partnership. In exploring this theme, I will speak of the Cree and our traditional homeland of Inuishti in relation to northern development and our recently concluded governance agreement with the government of Quebec and the mining sector. Who are we? We are the Crees of Inuishti. We call ourselves Inu. Inu means people of the land. There are more than 18,000 of us and about 16,000 residing in the nine Cree communities. And as you can imagine, for thousands of years, we have lived in Inuishti. Inuishti is the traditional territory and homeland of the Cree of Northern Quebec. That's what that term means, the land of Inu or Inu. Our traditional territory covers some 400,000 square kilometers of land. That's about two-thirds of the size of France. It includes the lakes and rivers that drain into the eastern James Bay and southeastern Hudson Bay. For the Cree, all of it, the lands and waters, the plants and animals, uh, is, very, is very sacred to us. Inuishti is not empty or a, an unoccupied territory. This territory is, in fact, the basis of a Cree traditional economy and self-sufficiency. Inuishti is fully occupied and intensively used and managed by the Crees. The Cree occupation of the territory is not restricted to this traditional activities. My, my father is a, is a hunter, he's a fisherman, he's a trapper. My grandfather lived to be 115 years old. His father was uh, 115 years old. His grandfather was uh, 135 years old. So I plan to be around for a while. <laughs> My genes are pretty good, I guess, you know. <laughs> In terms of partnership, uh, before turning to uh, Northern Resource Development and Governance, I want to stress the importance of partnership for the Cree. Partnership is a form of, of agreement to persons or peoples come together to create something, to build something. They realize that, that together they are stronger than they would be separately. Living off the land for thousands of years has taught the Cree the importance of partnerships. Our land is beautiful. As one of our elders has said, it is a garden. It provides for us. It has allowed us to survive from time immemorial. Yet our land can also be demanding. Even harsh at times, does not forgive arrogance or pride. If we have survived all these generations, it is because we have learned to respect the land, and because we learn to rely on one another. We are not so foolish as to think that each of us can do it all. We have to work together, 
in partnership. A little history lesson. For the Korea Treaty, it's a formal partnership agreement when between nations. Our treaty is the James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement. We signed it with Quebec and Canada back in 1975 in the context of the James Bay Hydroelectric Project. We saw it then, and we still see it as a partnership between Inu and the government to share in the governance and the development of Inu's chief. When our treaty was signed more than 35 years ago, it was the first modern treaty in Canada. In other words, it was the first modern partnership in Canada between Aboriginal peoples, the Cree, the Inuit, and the government. For some time after its signature, the promise of partnership of the James Bay Agreement was not fulfilled. The 1980s and 1990s was, were a difficult time in many ways. Many disputes arise from the Cree and the governments because the Cree considered that the governments were not living up to the promises they made in the treaty. Legal proceedings followed one another until it became difficult to keep, to keep track. Something had to change. That change came about through the vision of two remarkable leaders, former Grand Chief Ted Moses and former Premier Bernard Laundrie. In 2001, they met in it and they agreed that it was time to set aside the old conflicts. It was time to reset the relationship. And so they determined to create a new relationship, a new partnership through a new relationship agreement. This agreement was signed in February 7, 2002. This and has come to be known as a Pay de Brave. The Pay de Brave marked a turning point in relations between the Cree and the government of Quebec. It became a second chapter in this relationship that started with the James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement. It opened a way to a new, a new partnership between the Cree and Quebec in the development of resource wealth of Venus G. The decade since the sign of Pay de Brave has, been, has seen major energy developments as well as many new mining projects. For example, last summer on June 24, I joined former Premier Charest and Terry Vandel, the president of Hydro Quebec, in the inauguration of the important new East Main 1A hydroelectric project. For the Cree, partnership is not just about business, just as important is partnership in governance. I have repeatedly and said that economic development and governance are closely linked. Without the right governance structures, there can be no lasting economic development. We need to get the governance right in Inushji for the Plan Nord to deliver its promise and for the Cree to support it. The third chapter in the relationship between the Cree and Quebec began this past summer. On July 24, 2012, I signed with the former Premier Charest, the agreement on governance in Inu is G. James Bay. The James Bay and Northern Quebec Agreement of 1975 laid the foundation of the treaty relationship between the Cree and Quebec. The Pays de Brave in 2002 established a partnership between the Cree and the Quebec for the economic development of the territory. The new governance agreement builds upon these two earlier agreements to establish a partnership between the Cree, Quebec, and our neighbors for the governance of the territory. The governance agreement accumulates a special nation-to-nation -nation negotiation process to resolve government's, governance issues in the territory. This process was needed to end the exclusion of the Cree in the governance of the territory. This exclusion resulted from the adoption in 2001 of a law that unilaterally changed the composition of the Council of the Municipality de la Bay James without Cree consent. We believe that this change violated the treaty rights of the Cree under James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement. It mar marginalized us in our own homeland, and to us was an unacceptable situation. The governance agreement sets out the details of new governance regime in Inu's chief. It translates the principles of inclusiveness and partnership in governance into practical mechanisms. For the first time, it gives the Cree the sense that we will be real partners in the governance and development of our homeland. The, go the governance agreement has two main components. 
First, it provides for the creation of a new public regional government on what we call Category 3 lands, which form 80% of the territory. The regional government will be composed of representatives of the Cree and our neighbors, the Jamesians, in equal numbers. They will exercise powers of municipal management, economic development, land and resource planning. It will replace the current municipality, the Labay James. The second main element of the governance agreements provides for greater autonomy on what we call Category 2 lands. These are the lands over which the Crees have exclusive rights of hunting, fishing, and trapping. The, <clears throat> as provided for under James Bay Donor Quebec Agreement, the, the governance agreement provides that Cree will exercise powers on Category 2 lands under Quebec laws with respect to such matters as local and regional government, land and resource use and planning. The exercise of these powers in order to 50 parallel is subject to prior agreement, of course, with the Inuit and Quebec. So the governance agreement signals a new era in governance in the Inuit James Bay territory. An end to the politics of exclusion and the beginning of politics of inclusion. A new partnership between the Cree and Quebec a new partnership with our neighbors in the governance of the territory, a partnership based on mutual respect, fairness, and openness. The new governance agreement will provide the clarity and certainty necessary to support investment in the resource sector and to create prosperity for the Cree and our neighbors in the territory. Some may ask if the new governance agreement affects third parties I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> Especially resource companies working in the territory. The answer is that the existing third party interests on category two lands such as permit, permits, leases, mining claims, timber supply, forest management agreements shall be maintained in accordance with the applicable laws and of course as provided for others under uh, Section 22, which is the environmental regime under the James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement. I do not think, it, I do not think uh, it an exaggeration to call this new governance agreement historic. Time will, of course, and the success of the agreement will depend on what all partners make of it. But for the first time since the James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement, we have a detailed roadmap for a truly inclusive form of governance in the territory. The governance agreement provides a new model governance in the Inuit chief. It is the first in Canada and perhaps in the world. As former Premier Charest stated in the sign of the governance agreement, and I quote, we've searched and looked for presidents and have found none. It is the first. There are no presidents. I'm convinced that the leaders of First Nation in Quebec and in Canada will, will want to look very closely at this agreement today. We would be flattered if they thought that through this agreement and the work we have accomplished together, that there is some source of inspiration of what they may choose as a common path, end of quote. But the test of the, of the governance agreement will be in its implementation. The agreement has many moving parts and will require new structures and processes to be put in place. We are under no illusions as to the scale of the task, but we are confident that with determination and good faith of the Korean and our Quebec and Jamesian partners, we will successfully implement the governance agreement. We are now beginning the process of the implementation of this governance agreement with the newly elected government of Quebec. To date, the signals from Quebec have been positive and we look forward to working with Quebec to translate our vision of partnership in governance into a practical reality. Let's talk about northern development. Let us see how the theme of partnership plays out in the context of the new governance agreement with Quebec and resource development in Inuit in particular the mining sector. Over the past several years, development in northern Quebec has been largely framed by the Plan Nord first announced by the former Premier Charest in September 2008. The new government of Quebec, although somewhat oblivious about the term Plan Nord, has confirmed its intention to proceed 
with the development of Northern Quebec. As a major driver of the Quebec economy, Northern resource development cannot be ignored. Anybody who aspires to be a premier of a province uh, cannot say there will be no development in, of natural resources within their provinces. He wouldn't be voted out because everyone seeks some kind of job opportunities and try to create the, uh, the economy and try to stimulate the economy. The CREA decided in 2009 to participate in the partner tables that led to the development of the Plan North. We established a CREA working group on the Plan North. We identified our priorities and expectations with respect to Northern development and have shared them with the government. These priorities include social housing, energy, transportation infrastructure, tourism, and protected areas. I don't believe that the government has all the answers. But it'd be nice to give them some projects, make them think it's their project and they support it. In February 2011, we released our Cree vision of Plan Norm, which I invite you to consult at the website of the Grand Council of the Crees, which is at www.gcca.ca. In my introductory comments to the Cree vision of Plan Nord, I stated that the Cree welcomed the responsibility, sustainable development of our traditional lands, Inuit The Cree want to be real partners in the development of the territory's vast potential, not passive bystanders. The Cree vision of Plan Nord sets out certain principles regarding the Plan Nord and governance. A, we said that the Plan Nord must respect Cree rights including those provided for under the James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement, the Treaty, and the Pay de Brad. B, that all development projects stemming from the Plan Nord and situated in USG will, will, uh, will not affect the Cree rights and interests. They will therefore require a consultation and accommodation of the Cree. C, these projects must provide for meaningful Cree participation and benefits through direct investments partnerships, contracting, and employment. All development projects stemming from the Plan Nord, or whatever they may call it. Premier, I'm sure the Premier of Quebec, Pauline Marois, will refer to Northern development that uh, Bernard Landry talked about back in, the, in 2000. I'm sure she will. <laughs> I am positive she will. So that all development pro projects stem from the Plan Nord and situated in the must comply, of course, with the environmental and social protection regimes provided for under James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement. But prominence must demonstrate that these projects are environmentally and socially acceptable, as well as sustainable in terms of, of the land, the resources, and the culture, and the identity of the Cree of Inuschi. Our Cree vision of Plan Nord state certain basic Cree expectations with respect to Northern development. A, it must facilitate new partnerships between the Cree and Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal entities. B, it must promote wealth creation for the Cree and other residents of Inuit through direct investments, contracts, and employment. It must accelerate job creation for Cree, especially our Cree youth, through the development of Cree technical, professional, and managerial workforce, and provide a fair share of the well-paid jobs for the Cree. To sum up, the Cree support the sustainable development of the North. We have made and will continue to make efforts to build partnerships with Quebec, with our neighbors in the territory, and the, and the industry, for an orderly development of the territory, for the benefit of all. Let me be clear, decrees, we have said that we are open for business, provided that it respects our rights, that the environment and produces real benefits for our people, and we have shown that we have much to offer and that we are wi willing and reliable partners. Mining. Mining is not new in Inuschi. In the 1950s, mines opened in many locations in the southern part of the territory. Exploration activity continued strongly during the 1970s. It decreased significantly in the early 1980s and did not recover previous levels until after 2000. Recent years have seen an exploration of interest in mining in Inuit with scarcely a month going by without another project being announced. 
The challenge now is to reconcile mining development with the Cree needs for the protection of the environment and our traditional activities and for a fair share of the economic benefits for our communities. The Crees have long experience in these matters. As early as 1995, the Cree Nation of Mississippi signed an impact benefit agreement with Metal Mining Company, later called Inmet, regarding the Trollis Gold Mine and about, about 150, 125 kilometers north of Shibugmu. While the agreement is confidential, it covered many of the subjects typically addressed in an IBA that include employment and training, business opportunities and contracting, social economic development, environmental protection, and remedial measures. Our Cree nation adopted a mining policy, which results from decades of, of effort on the part of the Grand Council of the Crees to secure recognition and acknowledgement of Cree rights. It expresses how our Cree rights apply in the context of mining development in Inusji. The Cree Nation mining policy makes it clear that the Cree are not against development. Under the policy, the Cree support resource development within our traditional territory, provided, like I said, that, the, that our rights are respected, that appropriate, appropriate measures are taken to protect the environment and our traditional activities, and of course, the benefits to flow to our communities. To be clear, our position is that no mining developments may occur in Inuishi unless they are socially acceptable to the Cree communities, as demonstrated by the conclusion of agreements with our communities. To return to our theme today, the Crees must be active members, not just passive bystanders in these developments. We have already started to implement the Cree Nation mining policy in relation to specific projects. Let me mention just two. In February 2011, we concluded a major agreement with Le Mines Obanaka, a subsidiary of Gold Corp, Inc., regarding the Eleanor Gold Project. The Obanaka collaboration agreement addresses important community concerns, inclu including those related to the environment, and at the same time ensures a stable context for the development and operation of the Eleanor Gold Mine. The agreement contains various provisions regarding Korean involvement in the development of the Eleanor Gold Project, including employment, business opportunities, training, and education initiatives. The agreement also addresses the parties' respective interests in the economic success of the project and ensures that the Korean will receive financial benefits through different payment mechanisms and participation in the profitability of the mine. This collabor collaboration agreement is a good example of an arrangement where, with the participation of the Cree, mining development can take place and prosper in Inushji in a spirit of genuine partnership. This agreement sets the new standard for mining proponents seeking to operate within Inushji. Stoneways Renard Diamond Mine Project is located approximately 290 kilometers north of the Cree community of Mississippi, within the community's tr traditional territory. In July 2010, the Cree and Stoneways signed a pre-development advanced uh, exploration agreement. Last spring on March 27, 2012, the Cree Nation of Mississippi, the Grand Council of the Crees of Inuishi and Stoneways signed the Mississippi Agreement which is an impact and benefit agreement. While certain of its provisions are, are confidential, I can say that the agreement addresses the following broad subject matters, training, employment, working conditions, business opportunities, social and cultural matters, environmental matters, financial matters, implementation, dispute resolution. I wish to acknowledge the spirit of openness and collaboration of Stoneway in negotiating the important agreement with the Cree. Stoneway has recognized that partnership with the Cree is an essential condition for the success of resource development in Inuishi. You notice I'm looking at Matt here. <laughs> Let me say that the Cree are ready, willing, and able to make this, this partnership work for our mutual benefit. Finally, it should be noted 
that although the Cree Nation supports sustainable and responsible mining and other resource development activities in Inuschi, we regard the radio radioactive uranium as a special case, since it represents risks and uncertainties that are unique in both scale and duration. Our nation will continue to exercise the necessary jurisdictions required to protect our way of life, our environment, our health, and our survival as a people. For the Cree partnership embraces not just business, it extends to governance, to every facet of human life. In the end, partnerships is about people coming together. That is what we seek with industry, with our neighbors in the territory, with the government. We have established a track record as reliable partners for the mining industry. We are able to negotiate agreements and to make them work. We know that resource development is key to creating jobs for our people. And we have experience in finding the right balance between economic development, protection of the environment, and of course, protection of our traditional way of life. We recognize that some uncertainties exist at the moment. The government of Quebec has indicated its intention to review the mining royalty regime. To date, few specifics have been released. We understand that the government wishes to look at all options, to consult with the mining industry and other stakeholders before announcing any substantive changes. We are confident that the government will be mindful of the importance of the mining sector to the economic well-being, not just for the Crees, not just for the communities in northern Quebec, but for all Quebecers as a whole. With the signature of the governance agreement and the deployment of northern resource developments, we are at the start of a great <coughs> adventure, a shared journey. We know that there will be challenges along the way. We Cree are used to challenges. We will not have survived for thousands of years in Inuschi if we had not been ready to face challenges. And we will meet those new challenges as well. We are confident that our partners, the government of Quebec, the Jamesians, and the mining industry are equally ready to embrace the challenge of working with us to create something new, something better, something that we can hand on to future generations with pride. <laughs> And with that, I thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you for your time. Be great. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, Chief uh, Matthew Kuhncom is going to have some time uh, for questions now. But since we have so many international visitors, just let me mention something. The agreements that uh, the Grand Chief discussed go much beyond the mining industry, but the mining industry itself in Canada regards them as a profoundly good example that it wishes would be copied across the country. It creates a level of certainty and the social, economic, and env environmental businesses that keep uh, mining socially acceptable. It was a tremendous job of partnership uh, by the, uh, by the, the, the Cree, uh, and I think it could serve as a model globally uh, for what you've achieved. Now let me ask if there are any uh, questions. Jean-Marc? Uh, thank you, uh, Blanchy, for your uh, insightful presentation. Um, I have a question regarding the Bill uh, 65, which is now uh, a defunct uh, project. Um, regarding the planner, uh, the planner project, uh, there is uh, an environmental side which was uh, seeking to uh, preempt 50% of the surface area from any economic development, including mining. Mm. Um, this was a project uh, proposed by the government to really close 50% uh, of the surface area of the Planar region to, from any economic development. And as an uh, explorer on miners, we know that land access is absolutely critical to develop uh, long-term mineral potential in a region, of course, including uh, Ishii Ishi. Can you comment on this? The plan now dealt not only with mining. It dealt with forestry, tourism, fishing, culture, 
etc. Mine was only a small part of it. Also, the plan or dealt with the protected areas. And of course, that's where the mining sector, the forestry uh, people were concerned about. And what areas are you, are you protecting? One of the things that we raised in the area of protected areas was that when you protect an area, can you consider that within our lands between the 49th to the 55th parallel, that you've already built transmission lines? There are 14 transmission lines that, that crisscross uh, Inuschi. Can you also consider the flooded areas? Uh, uh, at one time, the government says 11,000 square kilometers of land is underwater. That's, al that's already uh, underwater. Can you consider the, the, uh, the gravel pits, the uh, airstrips? And we, we, made, we made a list uh, trying to assist uh, the government in, in coming to the conclusion of protected areas. And, and we certainly understood, because we're at the same table as the mining sectors, the majority of the civil societies uh, were partners uh, uh, and sitting uh, uh, at the main table, uh, along with, uh, with Premier Shari and, and, and his government. In the protected areas, we were concerned about uh, of the previous approach of dealing with Inuit lands. When an area is already surveyed, I'll give you an example. Here in Canada, why are the First Nations of this country being given land that has no economic value? Why? Because the governments are already sending third parties to be able to look at their, to do their, their claims, to look at their wood right concessions, and then the, the land that is set aside called reserves for First Nations have no economic value. No wonder we, we cannot prosper, that we cannot move forward. We wanted to take a different approach, be able to identify what we call protected areas, that the cultural areas, the uh, areas that, that, that we use in order to survive. And I think we can work together. We, we know the area where we live. We know where the animal habitats are. We know where the fishing spawning grants are. We know where our moose yards are. We know where with the kind of wood that we use for our material culture to make our snowshoes, uh, uh, toboggans, etc. And if you sit down with us, we can tell you, this is the area we're interested. Why, why don't we have that same opportunity as the mining companies do where they can show where their uh, mining claims are and be able to f seek a solution? That's why I, I push for changing the governance structures and the process where we, the people that are within the territory, there's 18,000 Crees. The non-native communities that, that live south of us are only about 15,000. Certainly, democracy dictates that, that, that the majority should be involved and, and that they should have a say in the way development takes place. I don't think anybody would dispute that. So let us change those structures, create new processes, and be able to work together. I guarantee you my people will not say, you non-native people, you cannot sit down with us. We didn't do that. That's what they did to us. They excluded us, but we didn't do that. We tell them, we're going to be different. We're going to share the land. We're going to create a regional government. We'll sit together. We'll, we'll develop a partnership. Let's develop the north for you, for us, and for the Quebecers as a whole. I think we have time for a couple more questions. Is there another question here? So uh, I work with an engineering firm that's involved in developing some of these mining projects. Uh, and I, I think if I heard correctly uh, in the new governance uh, agreement, uh, you referenced that the laws of uh, Quebec apply within the region. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suspect that uh, especially uh, some of the federal laws like uh, fisheries and oceans and some of these also apply? Yes, they do. The short answer, yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. Question back there. Uh, question. How does the Cree, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with the case, and so excuse my ignorance, but um, how does the Cree, did it have to deal with dissent within the Cree? And if so, how did it deal with it? Is the leadership cohesive enough to ensure that there isn't dissent within the Cree? 
are the people of Ontario always in, in unanimity when it comes to any issue? <laughs> Do not expect us from us. <laughs> Uh, of course, we, 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 uh, we try to get a, the general consensus. We try to provide the information, have an internal debate, and, and be able to have our, our, we always do community consultations, uh, we involve the chief of council, we, we have uh, uh, youth councils, we have elders councils, uh, and uh, we have public meetings. Uh, so I think we have a system in which we can allow our people to be participants to have a say uh, before we make any uh, decisions as to what our positions will be. I, I can't resist but say, given the current political situation in Quebec, the puzzle is not going to be who speaks for the Cree. <laughs> the puzzle is going to be who speaks for Quebec. <laughs> Do we have another question? Yes, please. Yes, uh, Brian Chief, what's your take on all the uh, regulatory and statutory bills that are in the news nonstop, navigable? Waters Protection Act, Fisheries Act, uh, there seems to be a fast tracking of regulatory approvals underway in this country, and I'm wondering how that might play out on your home. Well, when the, uh, the Harper government trying to uh, uh, amalgamate and try to uh, the, the, all the laws and regulations to try to fast track uh, uh, development to make it easier for the proponents to pursue their projects, uh, he created a committee. I was kind of disappointed uh, uh, with that committee because it included it, everybody else except the First Nations of this community, uh, of, of this country. When, for example, in our area, we have the Hunting, Fishing, Trapping Coordinating Committee. We have members, Cree and Inuit members there, that have experience with the laws of this country about fisheries and oceans. They're very familiar. We have represented that sitting in COMAX uh, and have developed expertise. These are Aboriginal Cree and Inuit people. And, they, and the government didn't even ask us. That's the problem with, it, with this government. It, it, you exclude certain people. But when you look at development across this country, where is it going to happen? Be realistic. It's going to happen in the north. Who lives in the north? The Dene. The Cree. The Ojibwe. The Inu. I can go on and on. Certainly, it would be wise to invite them to sit at this committee and not exclude them. It would make it a lot easier because then they feel that, they, that, that, that their views will be considered. They can have an input and be able to have a say in the way the laws of this country are, are, are to be drafted. And to be able to remind the government of certain past commitments or present existing laws, like, a, like the laws that are provided for under Section 22 of the James Payne and Quebec Agreement. And also, like the hunting, fishing, trapping regime under Section 24 of the James Bay and Quebec Agreement, to be able to remind the government these, this is what's at stake here, and it would make our life a lot easier. And I think it would certainly give some kind of certainty to, to the investors uh, uh, that want to uh, develop uh, and participate and develop partnerships here in Canada. Last question. Okay. Um, I'm with the World Bank, and uh, we work with uh, a number of governments. Uh, uh, to help them uh, reform their mining codes and mining regulations. And the new trends in mining codes is to have a clause within the mining code where uh, they, they, there's a set aside for the community, the local communities. We have uh, tried to implement those through community development agreement. But one of the constraints we've been facing is the institutional capacity within the community that even if the government uh, can make money aside from the tax revenues it's received, and these are uh, earmarked for the community, the capacity of the community to implement that. We found that it's, we have to start all over again between the capacity of the government and the community. What advice would you have for communities in Asia, in, in Africa, um, that uh, you know, are developing the same framework we have uh, to, to have uh, an organic development based on uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I've been involved in the development of a relationship between our member states and the indigenous peoples, in drafting of the UN Declaration on, on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, and, and certainly I had the opportunity to meet various indigenous groups uh, in around the world. And certainly it is a challenge because uh, some of the indigenous uh, peoples do not have the treaties partly because of the governments uh, uh, that, that are in power of the day. 
But certainly, uh, 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 this is one of the more difficulties that I have as a leader. Uh, it's not within us to be able to declare, this is what we've done. In my society, it's considered as boasting. It is quite, it's quite a challenge for me. But I can tell you it took us 30 years to, to be where, where we are at right now. To be able to build a foundation in which we establish a treaty relationship with the, with the government of Canada, the government of Quebec, and to be able to build our institutions so that we have our, our, our institution like Grand Council, which I'm the Grand Chief of, which is the political arm of the Cree, which deals with the, with the rights and is advocate of the rights of, of the Cree nation. To be able to be a, create a Cree regional authority, which is the administrative arm of the Cree, which, which, is, which I'm the chairman of, which we provide and deliver services and programs to the Cree nation. To be able to, to establish our, and build our own communities, build up our own, our own justice buildings. We have about eight seven justice uh, buildings right now, and be able to change the laws of this country where we are the only nation in this country that are not under the Indian Act, that we replaced the Indian Act with, uh, with the Queen of Scappy Act that gave some legislative powers and bylaw powers to the chief and council. So we have a, a local government structure. We chose to, uh, to adapt, uh, 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 not declare ourselves a sovereign nation, but to be able to uh, use so what I call the, the legislative approach in protecting and advancing your rights. And certainly we created entities where we, we have uh, the Board of Compensation. You know, under the Board of Compensation is uh, subsidiaries. Uh, we, we own airlines. Uh, we own quick construction uh, companies and development companies, uh, et cetera. So after 30 years, I think we're ready to manage. We have our own school boards. Uh, we dictate as to uh, what the school calendar will be. If you want to deal with the crease, uh, don't come and see us in the fall or, or in the spring because we had more something and goose something. Forget it. You won't be able to deal with us. On the Cree Health Board, we, ha we have our own Cree Health Board in, in which we, uh, we manage and deliver the services. So we have our own institutions that we build over 35 year period. Other societies take 100 years to build their nations. We did it in 35 years, and it's been quite a challenge. But I think we're capable of be, be, being able to be masters of our, of, of our own homeland, to be able to have the financial and human resources. Now, each First Nation must decide what institutions that they, that they want to adopt if they want to succeed. Each First Nation must decide what they think is best for them. Uh, of course, it, it, it helps uh, if you know your rights and, and uh, if you uh, develop partnerships and be able to be willing to uh, sit down and talk. If you, if you're not willing to negotiate, if you're not willing to compromise, if you don't understand the principle of negotiation, of give and take, you're not going to go far. So it, I can go on and on, but I, I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs>